Hello! Today I have a video that I'm very, very excited about. And if you click this video, you probably saw the title, so you know what it is. This is my vintage fountain pen haul. I actually received these from an estate sale, so I'm so blown away. I am so incredibly lucky that I was able to find these. So I think from first glance, it's already, I feel like you can kind of tell what these pens are. They are um, pretty popular vintage fountain pens. So I'll just start from this side. This is the Parker 51 Aerometric, I believe. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. And this one is, I believe, in the shade Burgundy, either Burgundy or Plum. And it has a 16 karat gold rolled cap. And as you can see, it is the squeeze converter, which I believe is called the Aerometric. So because it has that squeeze converter, um, I can actually use this without restoring it, which is very nice. So I've actually been using this pretty consistently, and I'll show you how it writes in a second. But spoiler, it's absolutely fantastic. I know Now I know why this is such a sought after vintage fountain pen this is also very um well known in the vintage fountain pen community it is an esterbrook j fountain pen and it has a medium nib i'm not sure what number this nib corresponds to though I haven't done too deep of a dive into these fountain pens. I've only just tried them out a little bit. And as you can see, this is a lever filler. Now, this is a pen I'm also very excited about. Well, I'm excited about all of these pens, but especially excited about. This is a Parker, obviously. And this is the... This is a Parker Duo Fold. Um, and it is the Vacuumatic. As you can see, there is a button filler. And as expected, both of these need to be restored. I haven't actually even opened them up yet. I'm planning on saving the restoration for a video. I'll let you guys know when that actually comes. Um, with this pen, I am a little bit afraid to restore it just because, um... It's a really nice and expensive pen, um, and also it's a button filler, so those are a little bit harder to restore than the lever fillers. Um, so I will just see how it goes, because I haven't really inspected it yet, or... Because I haven't really inspected it yet, or um, looked too much, or done too much research on button fillers, so... I'll for sure let you guys know whether or whether or not I'm going to restore this fountain pen on my own. But yes, it has a gold nib. Honestly, I, I can't say that I've done enough research. I believe it's a 14 karat gold nib, but I'm not completely sure. Don't quote me on that. And this is the, this is a Schaefer, and it's a Lady Schaefer. I believe it's called the Lady Schaefer Scripsert. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And it is the gold, uh, gold filial. Maybe I should have done more research on this before making this video. Um, gold lace? I don't know, something like that. And this one is actually a converter pen, as you can see. And I have the, the 
I'm pretty sure this is a vintage Schaefer script cartridge in washable black. So that's pretty cool. It has a vintage converter in here as well. Um, there actually was some ink in there, but I I took it out to like clean the pen a little bit. I've cleaned all of these feeds, um, these pens feeds. This one I've completely cleaned and re-inked because that one is perfectly fine. This one um, I haven't. I've cleaned the nib and feed. And I re-inked it as well. I haven't rehydrated this cartridge. So, of course, since it's vintage, all the ink is kind of um, dried up. Because it is a open cartridge. And even if it wasn't open, it would be dried up a little bit. Um, but anyways, I'm rambling. I'm sorry. <sighs> I can re rehydrate this cartridge and then it would be perfectly fine to write with. But I haven't done that yet. And it's really easy. All you have to do is stick a syringe, um, a blunt tip syringe in there with some water and boom, you have a new cartridge that you can write with. So basically, I've been writing with these two already um, for the short period of time that I've had these pens. And these two, I've tried them out I by just dip testing them. And I'll go into a writing sample and then... I'll I'll explain a little bit more in detail the experience that I've had so far writing with these four pens. I'll just start with these two since I have the most experience writing with these. Um, I'll start with the Parker 51. So this pen, I believe it's a medium nib. I haven't completely disassembled the pen so I'm not completely sure yet, but oh my goodness is it wet and juicy and it is also incredibly incredibly smooth there is a smaller sweet spot I don't know if this is something that is n normal with hooded nib pens I believe it might be but I'm not don't I'm not sure because this is actually the only hooded nib that I've ever tried and own but it is incredibly smooth once you um, write with it where it's supposed to be written with, I guess. I'll just stop talking so you can hear how it writes. There's practically no feedback at all. It's like writing on a cloud um, and it's as you can see, very, very wet. If I just make some lines, you can see like how it glistens on the paper. And Diamine Red Dragon doesn't really shade, but you can see that there's some shading because of how juicy this nib is. It's just an absolute pleasure to write with for sure. This is the, of course, Lady Schaefer. And I don't know what this type of nib is called. Um, I believe. <laughs> I don't know if it's called a hooded nib because there's no hood per se. But it it kind of seems in the same shape and it kind of has the same characteristics. Um, this one I feel like there's more leeway to write. In different directions than the hooded nib for the sweet spot there is one distinct area where it's a lot smoother to write with but also um, if you turn the angle of the nib on the paper a little bit too much then it actually won't even write but as for this pen you can you do have some more leeway on where you decide to put the nib onto the paper but I do also think that there's a smaller sweet spot where um, only that one area is smooth, but it's incredibly smooth. So I'll stop talking once again so you can hear how it writes.
and this is I wouldn't say very wet writing but it's wet enough um, it's not dry by any means um, but the pen smoothness I think that's the only reason why this I think this is just as smooth as the Parker 51 the only reason why there is a little bit of a feeling discrepancy there is because the Parker 51 is juicier as well as a wider nib so I think that both of these are incredibly smooth and very pleasant to write with it's just that this is a little bit drier than this pen and of course the nib is much finer so now for these two as I said before I these aren't restored so I can't exactly tell you how great these two pens write because dip testing it is different from actually filling the pen so what I can tell you though is I'm pretty sure both of these sacks are completely calcified um yeah I'm pretty sure they're completely calcified so they're hardened in there so it will take a bit for me to completely remove the inside calcified sack and then um replace the new filler mechanism so I definitely will make a video on that once I do. I do have my, my one other vintage found pen um, that you guys have asked me to do a restoration on and I haven't been able to thus far but I promise you that it is coming. I will make a video on that as soon as I get the materials. So as I said earlier in this video, I have completely cleaned out the nib and feed. So this pen actually gave me quite a lot of trouble. So I would completely clean out the nib and then I would soak it for a while and then I would dip it into ink and then I'd write. And I know I would know that the feed is completely um like I know that the feed has ink in it. But then for some reason the the nib just would not right it would refuse to like let out any sort of line on the paper so i continued to kind of tinker with it and mess with it and i finally widened the tines on this fountain pen so that it finally actually wrote so i'm gonna dip it in this ink and let's see if it decides to actually write <laughs> Thankfully, it's actually writing, but I think you could hear that this pen is a lot more feedbacky. I don't want to say scratchy, but honestly, it's a little bit scratchy. Um, I feel a little bit disappointed in saying that, seeing that Esther Brooks are a very sought after vintage fountain pen they're very well known as a great beginner vintage but from my experience with this one nib as you can hear it sounds um scratchy my standards are a little bit higher since this has such a good reputation as well as I guess most of the pens that I've written with um, aren't like this. So I, I don't have the Hong Dian Black Forest to compare with it right now but I would actually say that this nib is either on par with that Black Forest nib or scratchier than that nib. And the thing is, I'll give you a little close-up right now. But as you can see, I don't see any sort of misalignment of 
the nib um, really whatsoever. So what I'm experiencing is purely just on the nib itself. And I've tried to kind of write in a couple of different angles. But as you can see, no matter where I turn it, it still kind of has that um, scratching. So I hate to call it scratchiness because I enjoy feedback, but let me just show you this sailor. I think you could hear the difference pretty, um, I think you could hear the difference. So the sailor has feedback, but you could hear a very audible difference between the sailor and the Esterbrook. And I don't know how to describe it, but it doesn't glide across the paper um, that well. Especially if, you know, if you stay in one area, it, mm, well, no, it still doesn't glide across the paper that well. But if you stay in the one area, it's like, oh, okay. But whenever you write, you generally turn the nib just a little bit because you have to get like, you know, different angles whenever you're writing a different letter. Um, and whenever you kind of do that on this pen, nib kind of gets caught on the paper a little bit. I don't want to just completely bash on this pen right now just because I really, probably out of the four, I have the least experience writing with this one because I just got it to actually write. I was a little bit taken aback at first with this pen because I've never had a pen like that before. I've never had a pen with the tines so tight that it wouldn't write at all. And I mean, like, it took me quite a few days and tries to get this to actually write. It does give a little bit of ink. So maybe I will have to completely um, re- evaluate this pen reevaluate this pen because i could be taken aback by my first experiences with this pen um the more i write with it honestly the better it is to me but yeah we'll see i think it was just scratchy at first maybe because it hasn't been written with for that long but you know what i'm just gonna i'm just gonna leave it at that it didn't give me the best first impression. The nib isn't nearly as smooth as the other three that I have. But I will continue trying it and I'll let you guys know later whether I like it more or not. So now for, honestly, one of the stars of the show. This is the striped Parker Duo Fold. It's absolutely stunning. And I'm going to give it a little dip test. I am so sorry. I was a little bit out of frame when I was describing this pen. Um, but that is what the um, wetness of the pen looked like. But I was giving it some significant pressure when I did that. As If, if I'm just writing normally... It's really not that wet. It was only when I like actually put some pressure on it that it released more ink. So honestly, on the drier side, because as you can see, these two, the Esterbrook is um, drier. And they're about the same nib width too. So I would say this is probably the driest out of the four. This is the Parker Duo Fold, and it's striped. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, 
I think this might be one of the earlier variations because there are only two bands. I think maybe the 1940s to 50s. I'm not completely sure. So I will do a little dip test. Oh my goodness. Wow. Can you guys see how wet that is? Like, um... Oh my gosh, that's even wetter than the 51. And this one is also incredibly smooth. I think it sounds louder, but when writing with it, there's... It feels incredibly smooth. It doesn't feel scratchy or anything like that whatsoever but the funny thing is this fountain pen is actually a little bit misaligned as you can see the tines aren't um completely straight with each other so if anything this is writing scratchier than it normally would I'm too afraid to actually align the tines by myself. Um, I really don't want to ruin this precious uh, vintage fountain pen. Um, but even re regardless of that, just writing like this is honestly very, very pleasant. And as you can see, it is an incredibly wet writer, as in incredibly. Like, there was a whole line of ink, um, even after you let it sit for a little bit. So, I've only had great experiences with this fountain pen as well. Um, this probably isn't a fountain pen that you could use on cheaper papers, but it is a very, very fun fountain pen to write with. especially because of all of its characteristics. So there you go. <laughs> Those are my scribbles and rambles on these four vintage fountain pens. As I said, I feel incredibly blessed to have come across these and now own these. Um, I'm so incredibly happy and I really love every single one um, very, very much even though I didn't really give this Esther Brooke as much of a chance because of my first impression, but I promise I will try out more. So that is my vintage fountain pen haul. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!